Welcome back to another episode of Demon Folklorist. I am, yes, that Demon Folklorist, probably the only one right now. Sadness, but we move on. We also have little baby Salem sleeping on his mommy today. Yep, he helps me record. I have to have him in the room because if he's left out of the room, he screams. So, better to have him in here and he decided to sleep on mommy, so... Who knows? We may have some commentary from Salem Boy. So today we are going to be talking about species one, two, and three for our horror-a-thon. And in order to talk about species, which was recommended for me to rip apart by my good friend Jonathan Phoenix, go check out his podcast, I feel we are going to have to go over a term. So this is called Born Sexy Yesterday, and it's a term in media where the main character usually like like they're the main character but they're also somehow not they also seem to figure heavily into this male protagonist's journey so they end up being very naive and they're overly sexy they're usually sex obsessed and kind of stupid in the ways of the world and they usually need a man to teach them They're basically a child, whimsical. Lots of movies use it in almost like a manic pixie dream girl kind of way for like the main moody male protagonist to like wake up. He has to teach this girl things and it's really stupid, but it happens a lot. She's also usually somehow either naked or in something that does not leave a lot to the imagination. She's also usually skilled in combat or killing and it adds to her sex appeal that she could totally kill you, but she chooses not to. I feel like it stems from a man wanting a naive, fun woman, somebody fluffy and insubstantial, but also somehow a little bit of a badass, so they respect her a little bit, but also somebody who's going to always take his lead. And I feel like this is based on fears, and they brought this up in the video if you go look up Born Sexy yesterday on YouTube, they talk about how it's about fears based on women being superior and also connected to fears of satisfaction in sex because a woman who's basically a girl would never leave you because she doesn't know any better. So mediocre men can automatically be the hero. Also, there's this whole thing with purity and virginity, so she has no past lovers, no form of rejection because she does not know how bad you are, (laughs) but whatever. He also doesn't really have to try. But here's the thing. Innocence really is not sexy, and they talk about this in the YouTube video by Pop Culture Detective. And this trope also feels a little bit pedophilic, but that's kind of a whole different thing. So let's jump into Species. This came out in 1995. I gave it a 3.5 slime cocoon out of 5 slime cocoon. I was really excited about this one, actually, because... I thought it was awesome that some of the same people who worked on the alien designs in, you know, Alien were working on this. And also Christopher Young did the score and I love him. He's awesome. So as always, it begins with the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and trying to prove that we're not alone, but maybe we should be. That's all I'm going to say. We have a super young Michelle Williams waking up in a cage, being watched intently, not weird at all, and about to get cyanided. And she gets out like a minute later and I was excited for her to get out and kill everybody because it's like, dude, uncool. Fuck those bitches. I mean, they're sitting here, they're playing God and she kills anybody who tries to victimize her. So I love her already. Her name is Syl, which has something to do with the like acronym of this project for Project Athena. Michael Madsen is here and has a cat. Forrest Whitaker's in this too as a psychic. She escapes, she gets on a train. Her face sprouts tongues, and then they cocoon her. And then, oh look, it looks like it's more like an undulating vagina cocoon, as you do. Um, It eats people and spits out fully formed woman sill through rapid creation. So, you know. And then we have the weirdest focus group ever, 
who is being brought together to find her. And naturally, this is the Arecibo station from Seti's fault, which unfortunately isn't a thing anymore. I only really know about the Arecibo station because of contact. And then I heard they shut it down. And I was like, well, that's sad. So what had happened is that we were sent a message in, from deep space about how to create this thing. And, like, why would you trust that message of how to create hybrids? Like, what is wrong with you? You really think aliens are here to do good? Not always, bro. Okay? Sometimes they want to kill us, and maybe we are the infection. Okay? I have not I don't have a very high opinion of humans. The whole idea of, like, oh, well, we made her a woman, so she'll be more docile and controllable, like, f- as fucking if. Often in, like, predatory species, it's the woman who's the predator, so, yeah. Way to go, buddy. But beautiful woman as a predator, it literally just looks like confidence. And I was thinking that as I was watching her walk down the street, she gets this, like, Vegas, like, wedding dress thing. And it feels really off. Like, what? She can't think about anything besides being pregnant. I know. She is a predator alien species, but, like, what? Like, she can't have a career? (laughs) I think it'd be fun. Alien career. You never know what she wants. We should ask her. Anyway. Then, you know, the whole born hot yesterday, fully formed, but the mind of a child, which, if you unpack that, is deeply terrifying. We have this, like, massively multiplying sludgy weirdness without the human mask and it's just bubbly green ick growing in the lab flames can't kill it and it's rapidly expanding and like I'm gonna be honest I don't really remember what happened with this I just know they were working with it but then they ended up killing it I think maybe with hydrochloric acid because that comes up in later movies but I wasn't paying the most attention because, of course, we want to go back to what is Syl up to. But it does feel like an excuse to look at this woman naked um, and watch her kill other women for a man, which, no. Like, women sometimes are awful to other women, but I like that we're more in this era of women supporting women because I'm a girl's girl, but Syl is not a girl's girl, and... I personally loved watching her kill her potential rapists, so that was fun. And then there's this thing that comes up in every movie where she goes and looks for potential mates, but then she rejects them because of something in their genetic code that she ends up sensing. And it is kind of fucked that when you're diabetic, it's code for damaged in these movies. But, you know, like, I guess technically, yeah, your body is not operating at optimal strength. But still, like, come on. Syl is having dreams of weird bug shit turning round and round to insects probably doing it. And she gets hit by a car, but the bus stop she flies into takes more damage than she does because she is self-healing. I gotta tell you, this all felt like a sci-fi porno plot. She wants your baby. Are you gonna give it to her? I'm sorry. This is so dumb. But, like, okay... I did actually really like this premise. This is a really interesting thing, and I would love to see the Species series rebooted. Because if we could strip away some of the fucking weirdness of the male gaze and the whole, like, monster theory, fear is just a form of desire. The fact that you're afraid of her, you're also kind of into her, and, you know, it happens with a lot of monsters. It happens a lot in fiction, Like, look at the Akatar series. People are lusting over fairies and shit. Like, you know, it happens. We have these ideas about who and what these things are, and maybe they're better than humans. Who knows? We don't know. But it's a thing. She's getting a little lizardy while while killing, and she can influence people's minds. It's giving rapey lizard, but... And she's chopping bits of herself off for reasons... That we don't know. It gave Terminator 2, but with horny lizard women. She changes her hair color and cut and is suddenly completely unrecognizable. It's very Clark Kent. And is also kind of a creep. She's spying on people having sex and she screws Doc Ock. And she kind of looks like a mechanical phlegm medusa in these, like, fantasies that she's having and whenever she has sex. 
a little bro is born from her. First, he looks like a little boy, then a cross between a fly, a boy, a lizard spider, and something else that is very messed up. The CGI is not great, but it's not terrible considering what year this is. And I just have a question. Are all scientists, like, super horny? Because it, every movie I've ever seen that featured scientists like this totally implied that that's exactly what's happening. And I'm like, control yourself. Syl is pissed about the boy dying. This felt like they were really trying to capitalize on, like, an alien Terminator 2. And she dies in the blaze. Like, bro, how badly are you ripping off Terminator 2? Anyway, Syl comes back through the rats as you do. So, like I said, (laughs) 3.5 slime cocoons out of 5 slime cocoons. I enjoyed it. Species 2 came out a couple years later in 1998. I also gave this 3.5 slime cocoons out of 5 slime cocoons. So, dipshits, I mean humans, go to Mars and they get infected. So, Syl is brought out again, re-engineered to help for some reason, and bro like want sill I don't I don't know but they want to continue their little science experiment to learn how to protect ourselves against alien species with no consequences and I'm just thinking the whole time she should kill you all you all suck she's in a cage that's not cool she's also like part human so it's like you know I feel for her we've got her in this like very fifth element blue outfit for a reason and this is Eve her embryonic match to Syl, but she's never met a man and she's a lot more docile because that can be genetically engineered, right? And we also have Laura from the first movie. And I do love her because she takes no shit from anybody about replacing her. Like, they imply it and she imply it heavily that she should be replaced. That And she's like, okay, you do it then, big man, if you're so clever. And he, he backs off. It's funny. Like I said, this is more alien fantasy porn shit because we have this hot, infected man, like the astronaut who wants only the hot alien woman. And not only that, there was some fucking weirdness going on, I think, in the 90s because this is not the only movie I've ever seen this happen in from this time period. But we have a a biological sister fantasy with two sisters wanting to share this astronaut dude And, like, watch each other do it. And I'm like, what the fuck? That is disgusting. Like, this could all be done so much better. And instead, it feels like softcore alien porn. You know? Because this is a really fascinating idea. Like, we probably already have hybrids. Have you ever met somebody that totally gave you, oh, you are definitely an alien vibe? If we strip away the alien porn shit... We could have a really good movie on our hands. I'll give them this. The alien birth scene is horrifying, and I loved it. We've got a bunch of these kids being born, and it's like, from these human women, they dig their way out, kind of. The astronaut is basically possessed by the alien DNA he got infected with, and he's like, time to bring my fully grown children to this weird house and hide them. And we have some really good The Thing-like body horror going on, so I enjoyed that. All the Sills, past and present, want to have sex with Michael Madsen for some reason. And apparently, whatever infected bro on Mars, like, dried it up into the red, dry hellhole that it is now. And all the astronauts are trying to be intimate with their significant others, and instead they're dying. And then Patrick, who is astronaut bro found his wife dead and little alien bro son and then he put a very long rifle which felt weird because like I had like questions about the mechanics of it but never mind he put a rifle in his mouth and shot himself but then he reformed so all right he's trying to impregnate as many women as possible for a small army and it felt very spy kids like I said alien porn meets the astronaut's wife alien possession and hybrids galore I actually liked the astronaut's wife it it gave me some really interesting ideas about possession and the nature of possession but I'll probably write a thing on it later I do plan to start a patreon at some point but that's gonna have a lot of work that I have to do so to get that off the ground I'm thinking maybe next year or some point they wake Eve's shit up like and by shit I mean her genes that have been dormant all this time to increase her connection to alien boy And 
this is such a fantasy with Eve walking around in a white long sleeve button up shirt that I'm just like, she can wear clothes. Okay. Like, this is stupid. We have various kiddos that are cocooning into adulthood as pure aliens. It's giving Dracula's castle from Van Helsing of the undead in this house. And then, like, she finds him and they're like, yeah, let's do it in this dirty barn. <laughs> Look, if she's fully naked, he should be too. I, I don't really want to see him. But, like, why is she laid so bare? Misogyny. That's why. Their alien souls are linking or whatever. There are so many tentacles. It's also really giving Talus vibes from that horrible mummy movie that I loved and hated that scared the shit out of me as a child. If I had to guess, there's definitely people who worked on that movie who are in this one now. By injecting the aliens with our diseases, that's how we win through the dumb shit that our bodies have already, you know, overcome. But it kind of makes sense, right? It's kind of like a whole M. Night Shyamalan thing with, like, they don't like the water. And it's like, mm, way to come to this planet with all the water. But because we have so much bacteria and so many diseases everywhere, right? The final forms of these aliens do vaguely look like knockoff xenomorphs mixed with steampunk, a little bit of Predator too. We have Eve turning on Alien Boy. Alien Boy attacks her and inserts a tentacle penis deep into her soul. I don't know what was happening. But it also gave, like, Loki's offspring in the ritual. The sickle cell carrier blood is what did it for him in this movie. So they took the blood out from this guy, and then they injected it into the alien, and I, he died or whatever. But not only did Eve die, but a son is alive, and she had a baby incubating inside her. And that's where we pick up for Species 3. This came out in 2004. I hate to say this, but I didn't like it. It was a 1.75 slime cocoon out of five slime cocoons. And, you know, they really stripped away a lot of the alien porn fantasy, except that was kind of the problem with it. Like, I think a new species have this, like, fear is a form of desire type of thing, but without making it alien porn and still making it interesting. There were interesting things about this movie. But there were long periods of time where, like, nothing was happening and it was just a lot of exposition and I was like, this is stupid. But, you know, I also think that the alien porn needs to be stripped back. Eve is alive but only for five seconds. But something weird and kind of phallic is going on with another birth. Her son chokes her with his long lizard tongue. I don't know why. And another baby is born through really freaky osmosis. The kid with the weird tongue escapes, and so does this guy, this soldier who isn't a soldier. He just dressed up as one. I don't think you can just dress up as a soldier and get away with it in the government, but whatever. And he gets away with the baby. Then we have the Takamak, which is a Batman-esque fusion reactor um, for reasons. And we find out that the guy who stole the baby is actually a professor at a university, and he is super unhinged and really, like... Who are we to say whose species should win out? And it's like, okay, you're not concerned about your own species winning out? Okay. This fusion reactor is supposed to give everybody clean energy, right? And the fusion reactor's underneath the university. And the guy who's running it, Dean, goes into this guy's class, Abbott, Professor Abbott, and he's like, viruses are the perfect predator. And he's like, not really. Like simply because viruses need a host otherwise they just they die like that's how it is anyway eve's daughter is growing up in the professor's basement ada's cat i'm assuming like dude you cannot control her and also she gets her name from a sarah lee box which is so american but he's also like there's a message in you from deep space and it's like why has nobody thought about the fact like, those aliens from deep space who are sending this could just want to kill us. Why is that not a possibility in anyone's mind? Anyway, we, I feel like, are really here in the Species series for Natasha Henstridge, who I adore. And she's really not in this very much, except in the birth scene. So, like I said, it's been a little bit of a slog, and I couldn't really get attached to Sarah. Like, she played the part really well, but it was also a bit wooden. 
and we didn't really feel for her at all and that was something Natasha Henstridge I feel like really brought to the role of Syl and Eve especially Eve because Eve is part human and it was giving me splice vibes like I totally thought she was gonna have sex with the professor Luckily, she did not. Turns out she doesn't even like humans. She's looking for alien stuff. Something that comes up is that all of her siblings are now sick. Like, they're getting really sick from the environment. She is part human. She has that immune system to, and the antibodies to fight it off. But these guys don't, and they're they're trying to get help for it, right? But... And we find this out from some dude who heavily is reminiscent of the doctor from Hellraiser 2. And if you know anything about mo- that movie, you know I, I love it and it is bonkers. Anyway, he wants to know where Eve's baby is. He is super sick with a bloody middle and he was that half-breed kiddo who ran away and he's turning. Or rather, he's getting actually sick from things like pollen and dust. Like, you are not going to survive here long come spring, my dude. That's just all I was thinking during the... His ear comes off. He's bleeding icky stuff out of his face pores. It was some really great body horror. I will give Species that. I loved it. But he totally dies and he has tentacles fall out of his stomach because that's a thing that happens. And, you know, that's how things happen in these situations. (laughs) I love how much you have to kind of suspend your disbelief a little bit to be like, of course, yes, this is what happens with aliens. (laughs) To, like, establish the difference between humans and aliens, right? I actually liked the main dude because he gives off, I am a total weirdo and I would absolutely do this kind of shit vibes. But I do really hate it. Like, this was from earlier in the movie and they kind of redid it a little bit later but I I really hate it when they kill animals to show ruthlessness like nobody needs that just kill some humans like we care less when that happens on screen so it's time for Sarah to get in her chrysalis and have it crap her out fully grown (laughs) tentacle dude is getting autopsied. A lot of things are happening. Sarah standing in front of the windows, fully naked as you do when you were born sexy yesterday, but changes her mind about sex randomly with this older dude who comes in probably because she sensed his imperfect nature. It's actually because she doesn't like humans. And she had already ripped his shirt off and he was like, careful, that's Brooks Brothers. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know if that's like a really nice brand or whatever, but it, it was like, that's what you're thinking about, dude? Like, wow. But he gets all rapey on her and she kills him. Because, dude, don't do that. I totally thought she was going to screw the young guy from American Psycho 2 because that's what I know him from. She ends up not doing that and goes off to go look for other people at this, like, college party. And she kisses this guy and he's like, oh, come on, give me a little tongue. She's like, you don't want the tongue. And just walks away. And I'm just like, yeah, you do not. And then, of course, she meets somebody who actually does believe in aliens to give her a ride to this place and then watches her get her arm chopped off and regrows. So, you know, she now knows aliens are real. I also really love, just a side note, alien autopsy scenes because they're really fun to look at. And they provide oodles of exposition and backstory about the alien without being boring because we get to watch too. I think they could have done it a little bit better or maybe just more in-depth kind of like the thing but you know it was good sarah finds a sibling and they start to have weird mystical like real form sex you know i'm talking about where she like they go into this like weird steampunk xenomorph form in their minds or whatever and then she realizes he is dying and she rejects him and i know it's not this deep But Sarah and Syl and Eve all feel like a metaphor for neurodivergence. But maybe that's just what it's kind of giving in this time period. You know, almost like people who are neurodivergent are kind of treated like aliens. But again, I don't I don't think it's that deep. It's just it's sort of what occurred to me as I was watching this. She gets attached a little bit to Dean, even though she isn't interested in mating with him. Something in the lab with tentacles attacks Sarah. It's mad about something and it's, I think it's one of her siblings, and it tries to rape her. Dean steps in, saves her, it kills Abbott. Then it dies from hydrochloric, hydrochlorine or chloric or something. I don't know. I wasn't very good at science, okay? I got a folklore degree. 
whatever. Abbott's dying wish is for Dean to create the new species. And yeah, like it was just, it was fun, but it was funny because that's all you care about, bro. Like, where are your priorities? So this was a lot better in terms of it being less of an alien fantasy, but it was also sort of boring. So I think they, you need to have a good mix of the two because like, yes, you can have such things in horror movies and it be almost like art, but when it's just alien porn, like, this is stupid, you know? Like, I, I'm sorry, as a woman, I just get bored because I'm like, really? This is what men are thinking about? Ew. Anyway. Also, finally, somebody has actually seen Jurassic Park and he's like, just because we can do something doesn't mean we should. And I'm like, that's what I've been saying. And Sarah just tries to come on to Dean but he's like dude you're not into humans and she's like okay maybe I want something and he's like okay what do you want and she's like well you need to continue Abbott's work I want my species to continue and then there's a sibling there's like a side thing with Dean's roommate and a sibling of Sarah's who's a pretty brunette and she has sex with a random gross dude at a gas station I'm gonna be honest I wasn't really listening because it was all kind of iffy but the siblings can all sense each other and her name's Amelia she starts falling apart um lands Sarah goes into full alien form and whips a man apart not kidding and then there's just this very Sarah Connor scene with Amelia stabbing Dean and then like tries to rape him it was weird and he turns on the fusion machine to kill her and Sarah throws her in and he ends up actually saving her, but we don't know that till the very, very end when the roommate walks in and then there's Sarah with a son. It wasn't actually her kid, but another project that Dean did to give her a mate, essentially. And his roommate's like, dude, what if they start mating? And he's like, oh, yeah, no, I made him sterile. And it's like, don't you think Sarah's going to be pissed about that? And he's like, yeah, that's a, that's a problem for future me. And I'm just like, dude, Okay. So humanity is saved yet again, and I actually didn't watch whatever the next species movie was because I feel that it's moving really far away from the original series once we get into, like, the alien children, and it just, I don't know. I feel like once you get into away from species one, two, and three, and then it goes into like, I think it's called species, the new awakening or something. That's how, you know, they've completely diverged. So I just, also, I didn't really have time and I kind of lost interest after species three. I was like, this is not going to get better. Is it? (laughs) But I enjoyed this a lot. I did really like the series or things about the series rather. Cause like I said, it got so porny and so weird and such like male gaze fantasy stuff and I was just like okay could we get back to the story (laughs) and also I really think they could ramp up the body horror aspect because it is fascinating and gross and really cool to watch so yeah I enjoyed myself but um I actually have no idea what next episode is going to be my life's been a bit crazy a lot of stuff going on at once and I have research to do for Gettysburg and talking about how you differentiate between different spirit types so if you're ever if you're over in Gettysburg around August 15th I believe I'll give you exact dates later I'll be there and I'll be talking about this stuff so if you want to come meet me I absolutely do anyway I have no idea what next month will be but I'll figure it out because I do love this podcast and I love you listeners my demon folk So yeah, see you later.